Hello and welcome to the history of Babylon 5. Today we're going to talk about the Dilgar War and Jadur the Death Walker. The Dilgar War was a massive interplanetary conflict between the Dilgar and the League of Non-Aligned Worlds, which later gained the support of the Earth Alliance. Prior to the war, in 2228, Facing almost overwhelming resistance in their occupation of the Narn homeworld, the Centauri Republic struck a secret trade with the Dilgar. In return for weapons, they handed the Dilgar the Narn colony of Halak 7. This was to be a staging area for the launch of their assault on the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. In 2230, the Dilgar openly assaulted the League sector. Despite combining their forces, the League of Non-Aligned Worlds was fighting a losing battle as world after world succumbed to the Dilgar conquest and experimentation. Dilgar tactics in this war were ruthless, including the destruction of entire worlds and the use of conquered races as subjects in their biological experiments. The League races were overwhelmed by the Dilgar assault and suffered heavy losses. The Desperate League called upon the major powers for assistance and help. Earth intervenes on the side of the League, motivated at first by a desire to establish a reputation for the Earth Alliance as a major player in the galactic affairs, and later by moral outrage as the horror of the Dilgar aristocrats became clear. Earth's entry turned the tide of the war, succeeding in driving the Dilgar all the way back to their homeworld after the Battle of Balos in 2232 where all Dilgar war masters were captured and tried for their crimes, except for one, Jadur, who was believed to be dead in the war. As part of that surrender, the Dilgar jump gates were shut down, their Quantium-40 supplies were seized as reparations, and automated defense platforms around Omlos imprisoned the Dilgar in their new homeworld. Sometime after the war, the Dilgar's son went supernova, wiping out the entire species. It was revealed in 2258 that Jardur had not been killed, but managed to escape to the non-aligned sectors and find refuge with the wind swords of the Mimbari. The immediate effect of the Dilgar War was to make the Earth Alliance a major galactic power. The League of Non-Aligned Worlds would for many years look to the Earth Alliance as its protector and benefactor. Earth Force began an immediate and rapid push to expand Earth's sphere of influence. However, the war also created an arrogant belief among Earth's military and civilian leaders that they could defeat any alien threat. Because of this new inflated view of its military capabilities, the Earth Alliance became anxious to gather more information about unknown races that might pose a serious challenge, like the Membari. The Earth Alliance ignored the warnings of the Centauri Republic and made a disastrous first contact that would lead to the bloody Earth Membari War. And we'll be right back with Deathwalker after this. Jadur, also known as Deathwalker, was a Dilgar officer and scientist who became infamous as one of the leaders of the Dilgar invasion force of the 2230s. Afterwards, she was a war criminal and the last of her species. In the Earth year 2195, Jadur was born on the planet Omlos and would eventually rise to the rank of War Master, specializing in biochemical, biogenetic, and cyber-organic weapons research. In 2228, as a prelude to the invasion of the non-aligned sectors, the Dilgar occupied the Narn colony world, Halak 7. Jadur performed various experiments on the population there, before some were able to flee and return to Narn. During the Dilgar invasion of the Non-Aligned Worlds in 2230, Jodur led the conquest of sectors 24, 39, 43, and 58. Jodur infected the entire population of Lang 4 with Staffer's Plague, just to determine how long it would take them all to die. In 2231 alone, she was responsible for the destruction of the planets Tyrus, Cormac 4, and Halak earning herself the epithet Deathwalker. She was also involved in the invasion of Balos. Following the end of the war in 2232, Jadur, unlike other Dilgar leaders, escaped capture by the League and Allied forces when Omlos' star went supernova, wiping out all life in the system. Jadur was left as the only known survivor of her race. In 2232, she was granted shelter by the Windswords, a particularly military Mimbari warrior clan. 
In return for their protection, Jadura provided them with her weapons research. Her presence in the Mimbari Federation remained a secret until the outbreak of the Earth Mimbari War in 2245, when the Wind Swords came to the Great Council with Jadur's weapons designs and that they had discovered her presence. During this time, she was able to develop what she would come to later think as her life's work, the Universal Anti-Agopic, a serum that retards the aging process and prevents disease. Though unstable and difficult to produce in significant quantities, she successfully tested a dose on herself and was rewarded with renewed youth and vitality. One of the breakthroughs, however, was a necessary component that must be fatally harvested from other sentient beings. Jadur would later come to believe that she would use her sermon to exact revenge and at the same time create a kind of new legacy for the Dilgar. While other civilizations would undoubtedly develop her serum and have to thank the Dilgar, they would also have to fight each other over the methods that they would have to use. And we'll be right back after this. In 2258, Jadur chose to come out of hiding and offer her discovery to any civilization including the Earth Alliance and Narn regime. Counselor Harrock arranged to meet her on Babylon 5 to make a deal on behalf of the Kari. She used a Mimbari flyer and a fake Mimbari identicard with the alias Gia Lobos to get her there from Sector 47 in Mimbari space. However, the meeting didn't happen. Though she was wearing clothing of the Mimbari warrior caste and appearing years younger than she should have, she was recognized in the passenger lounge by the Narn Ashate Natoth. Natoth's grandfather had been on Halak 7 and was one of Jadur's victims. Following her family's Shankar, she viciously attacked Jadur. Jadur woke up in Medlab to find her cover was blown and Stephen Franklin studying her serum. With the regime's attempt to intercept her ruined, Harak returned to Narn, leaving the situation to Ambassador Jakar. Jakar approached Jadur with a formal apology and reprimations for the attack, along with a handsome offer to triple whatever Earth had offered her for the serum. Jadur agreed to consider the offer on the condition that Jakar delivered to her the Toth's head within the hour. Jakar did not accept this. It did not take long for Babylon 5 staff to discover her true identity, and under direct orders from Earth Dome, Commander Sinclair attempted to have her quietly taken off the station and transferred to a Earth Force ship bound for Earth. This attempt was thwarted after the League representatives confronted them and demanded an assembly to discuss her trial of crimes against sentient races. Sinclair relented and convened a session of the Babylon 5 Advisory Council. During the council meeting, the League moved to have Jadar put on trial asking the Advisory Council to approve their decision. The Centauri Republic voted no, citing that Dilgar had committed no war crimes against them. Though the real reason was that the Republic had aided the Dilgar during the war. The Narn regime proposed to vote yes on the condition that she be tried on Narn, claiming their neutrality assured fairness. When the League, who were all well aware that the Narn had also collaborated, rejected this condition, the Narn voted no. With the Vorlan Empire abstaining, the Earth Alliance voted yes. The surprise came, however, when the Mimbari Federation unexpectedly voted no, saying that since they were not part of the Dilgar War, they had no right to judge Jadur. In reality, the Grey Council was afraid that a trial would reveal the truth, that one of their clans had not only sheltered a war criminal, but had also benefited doing so by gaining weapons designed by her. The voting at 3-2 to two against a trial with one abstention, Sinclair ruled that they must find another solution. An outraged League of Non-Aligned Worlds refused to accept any further compromise and withdrew the League from the assembly. Shortly afterwards, several warships from the League Worlds arrived in Babylon 5 space, each demanding Jadur's extraction. The situation was eventually diffused when Sinclair revealed to the League the existence of Jadur's universal anti-gopic serum and offered the League the opportunity to participate in developing it, after which Jadur would answer for her crimes. The League agreed and Jadur was prepared to depart for Earth, though not before taunting Sinclair with the truth about how to develop the serum. This, however, was not to be. As just before her ship was about to enter the local jump gate, a Vorlong cruiser jumped in and destroyed it, along with Jadur and her serum, 
while an astonished council looked on. Ambassador Kosh, who had entered the council chambers moments before, said simply, You are not ready for immortality. Thank you for watching the history of Babylon 5. Special thanks to The Babylon Project and all of its contributors for all information you heard today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you have, thank you. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.